So you uh, are doing some research here. Yeah, so uh, Cam the intern. Got his own own podcast. Got his own podcast. But it looks good. Looks good. Logos, good graphics. Maybe it sounds good, too. Oh, Cam. Hardworking kid. Cam? Yeah. Every day that kid's stock goes up a little bit. A little bit. Ryan, her three on the way. It's good off the backboard and in. I'm sorry. What a take by Tucker. Jones, another steal. Spin on Caldwell and the layup's good. I would like to see you hold a mirror up to yourself and interview yourself. As good as this was, it could only be better if it was all you. Tuning in, I was a fan. I was like, man, let's do it. Cam, thanks so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. Join today for the first time, Cam Isamone. Gallagher's going to have to shoot it from beyond the arc. And it's good. Jacobs for three. He got it. My goodness, what a shooting performance by Jacobs. I think Cam's corner is great. Tune in to Cam's corner. This kid's going to make it. He's going to make it here. This episode of Cam's Corner is brought to you by Simply Nutrition, located in Johnston, Rhode Island. At checkout, use code CAM for 20% off any shake and tea combo. Simply Nutrition, we're more than just shakes. All right, and we are back, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Cam's Corner. Today, joining me, Bishop Hendrickson High School's athletic director and head coach of the men's basketball team, Jamal Gomez. Jamal, thank you for taking the time and joining me today. Thank you for having me, Cam. It's a great pleasure. No, I appreciate it. And I did want to start off this episode uh, giving my condolences to you and your family uh, for the recent passing of your father, Lewis, and uh, dedicate this episode to him as well. Thank you so much, Cam. I appreciate it. My father meant uh, a lot to me and my family, and um, his passing a couple of weeks ago, um, it's been tough to handle, but but we're hanging in there, and I really appreciate the kind words. Thank you. No problem. At any time, man. And um, again, I wanted to ask you firsthand, have you ever been uh, featured on a podcast or anything like that in the Rhode Island area or outside Rhode Island or anything like that? Um, yeah, I, I've spoken with some different uh, different people over the years, um, but it's it's been a little while, so I'm excited for this opportunity. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Man. I, I appreciate it. Um, you know, I think uh, what you've been doing for not just Hendrickson in general, but for Rhode Island uh, athletes all over the state over the years has been incredible. Um, but before we start off, um, are you involved in anything else at Hendrickson besides um, uh, the, ath- the athletic part of it? Yeah, well, prior to becoming the athletic director, I was a school counselor for almost a decade. And then prior to that, I was a teacher in the classroom, a PE and health teacher. So I've been here this next, this coming year will be my 24th year here at Bishop Henrigan. And then prior to that, I was a, a student athlete here myself. I'm not going to tell you how long ago that was, but um, but this place is my second home. Bishop Henrigan is my second home and very proud to be a part of it. Right. And of course, and going uh, as far back as your playing days and things like that, what um, where does that passion for the sport of basketball come from? And where does it uh, come from? Like when were you introduced to the sport as well, just growing up? Yeah, so I was introduced to sports um, at a very young age. Actually, the first sport I was ever introduced to by my mother and father was uh, 10-pin bowling (laughs) back in like the early 80s. And that was kind of my first taste of uh, of sports. And then that kind of, uh, you know, moved forward from there where I got into baseball. Actually, baseball was my first love growing up. And then I uh, discovered basketball. I was about the age of 10. I got cut from my first ever tryout. And I still to this day remember walking home from that tryout, feeling very sad. And I said, that's not going to happen again. And really, that was, you know, at at the young age of like 10 or 11, started to fuel uh, a passion for basketball. Because I, I didn't like that disappointment. And I said, I'm going to work as hard as I can. So the next team I try out for, I'm going to make. And, um, and then, you know, that love kind of grew over time. You know, largely in part to my father. My father played a major role in my, uh, you know, in my life in general as a person, as a human being, and ca- you know, character. But a huge part of my life in athletics. And... Um, he was a, a huge supporter of mine, provided me with many opportunities, and I, um, you know, I jumped on all those opportunities, and uh, and so the basketball piece, anyway, that that progressed over time. Growing up, I was just an average dude, 
um, like many people when they get started, I, I oftentimes will say to um, to my campers and my players and my and my students that right every expert was once a beginner, right? And you have to be willing to go through uh, the learning stages to becoming an expert someday. And nowadays that's tough for a lot of kids to understand. They want that instant success, instant gratification, but having that patience is so very important if you want to develop the right way. So, I, you know, I progressed into, uh, you know, grammar school and then high school became a student at Bishop Hendrickson. I was a little guy. Um, I think when I came to Hendrickson my freshman year, I think I was five foot three. But I could play because I you know, was always out on the courts working on my game and playing, always playing against older and better competition. I, I grew up in uh, Cranston, Rhode Island, which is uh, actually the Edgewood side of Cranston, which is like the Cranston East uh, section of Cranston. Mm -hmm. And so I grew up with a lot of friends and, um, and, and it really honed my skills on the courts, on the outdoor courts. I guess I would have been what you'd call a gym rat, although the gym was always outdoors for me growing up. Yeah. Um, I would literally, this is no word of an exaggeration. I would spend eight, nine, sometimes 10 hours a day outside playing and working on my game. And I had a, um, a very close outside of my father, I had a very close friend of mine who passed away many years ago, who was like my trainer before trainers were a thing. Um, his name was Tom Wormeister and he would come out with me and he would work on my skills. He was like my trainer. He'd rebound for me, show me some drills to work on. And I would do that. And I just, I developed a passion for, for basketball. Um, and eventually as I, as I grew through high school, I had a chance to play for one of the, the best high school coaches in the state of Rhode Island, Steve Cesaretti, who will be ce celebrating his 80th birthday tomorrow. He's a very good friend of mine and mentor. And I had a chance to play for him for three years at Bishop Hendrickson and be uh, under his tutelage and mentorship combined with my work ethic. And then by the time I was a senior, I was a Gatorade Player of the Year, Converse All-American, McDonald's All-American nominee, first team All-State, All-Division. By the time I was a senior year, I was a senior, all of that work ethic, uh, you know, it caught, caught me. And I started to see a lot of success. Got on the AAU circuit a little bit, Cam, which back then it wasn't a thousand teams per state like you have now. Yeah. I think Rhode Island back then may, maybe had one or two, two AAU teams. I played for a team out of New Bedford called the Buddies of New Bedford and uh, played with, uh, with them for a couple of years. And that was when they weren't nearly what you see. What, AAU wasn't what it is now. And, um, and really continued to develop, play against better competition. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and that allowed me to get seen by some colleges and landed my, uh, my scholarship opportunity to play at Stonehill College. Yeah, that, 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 what, that was like the perfect way to segue into my next question. Um, great success, again, at, over at Hendrickson. Um, while standing out, you said 5'3". I didn't know you were that short, but I mean, it clearly didn't matter <laughs> with all the success that you accomplished. But um, again, transferring over to that next level at Stonehill, um, playing alongside Friars legend Ed Cooley for a few years, um, totaled in over a thousand points. Most recently, just inducted uh, in 2019 in the Hall of Fame uh, with the Skyhawks. Uh, just, you know, just elaborate on that. How did you land on Stonehill's radar, and uh, what was it like uh, the experience playing there? Well, um, it was interesting how that all came about. I was a very, very much a late bloomer in high school. Okay, I worked hard. I was like I told you, I was a gym rat in the gym all the time. And I was a late bloomer, so I, I really didn't start getting seen or looked at by colleges until my senior year. And it was actually late in my senior year. And it was in the springtime of my senior year after the basketball season, you know, the high school season was over. So, you know, I was traveling around, playing in some different AAU tournaments, uh, 
playing very well, scoring the basketball. And, um, and so I had a few schools that kind of came in the mix and then Stonehill came in the mix and the, the interesting, I guess it's not irony, but the interesting part of it is that my coach at the time who recruited me to go to Stonehill was a former athletic director and basketball coach at Hendricken. His name was Ray Pepin. So he was a legendary coach in Rhode Island and a legendary coach uh, in college. And so there was sort of like the Henrik and Stonehill connection there through Ray Pepin um, and another uh, coach who I played a, a lot for at Stonehill was uh, Dave DeShannis, who was Ray's um, assistant coach at the time, who was also a Henrik and grad. So there was kind of like that Henrik and Stonehill connection. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, so they gave me an opportunity. It was late in my senior year in high school. And uh, I went and visited the school when on my recruiting visit. Eddie Cooley took care of me on that visit. And um, I walked out of there. I said, this was the place I wanted to go. I just fell in love with it. And um, I got there. It wasn't the easiest, you know, it was, you know, um, it was a challenge, definitely. Moving from the high school level to the college level and it had it had its ups and downs there was some difficult times different difficult games and difficult years but again it's something I always try to to teach my uh my players now is you know when things get difficult you can't run right you have to face the challenge you have to work hard and you have to push through it right and um you know I had the great blessing of, of playing alongside many uh, great players at Stonehill, um, and Ed Cooley being one of them. Ed Cooley, I I o openly acknowledge he was a mentor and a good friend of mine during my time at Stonehill. He and I spent two years at Stonehill together. He was four years older than me, but he did a year of prep school after high school and uh, injured himself when he was in college, so he basically got two more years Um and then that's when I came on during his junior year and was able to spend a couple of years with him. And, and I, you know, I'm not surprised by all the success that he has had as a college coach, because he was like that when he was in high school and as a college level player himself, he was, he was a great mentor and you could see the makings of a great coach way back when. So, um, yeah, so my, my time at Stonehill, I loved it. I met my wife there, my wife, Tara. And uh, also after I graduated, my brother then went to Stonehill. So there's, a, you know, a strong Hendrick and Stonehill um, connection. And I'm truly, truly grateful for that opportunity. Um, and then it was, I think, of, uh, probably about two or three years ago, Eddie Cooley and I were inducted together at the Stonehill uh, College right. Hall of Fame Athletic Hall of Fame, which was just a great blessing and a great honor. Um, you know, I feel very, uh, very proud and humbled to, to, to be in their hall of fame. Yeah, most definitely. And of course, Ed Cooley being the coach that he is at that level. And of course the coach that you are at the high school level, um, you guys coming together as one, how has he helped you over the years? Uh, you know, maybe, uh, like you said, mentor you as a head coach outside of playing. Yeah. Well, he gave me some advice a long time ago when I was thinking about coaching in college, he was like, Jamal, you need to make sure that that's what you really want because college level coaching is a different, it's a different ball game. You're on the road a lot, a lot of recruiting. You're away from your family a lot. Um, yeah, you, you can make a very good living doing it, but your, you know, your career and your job is based on wins and losses. Unfortunately at that level, right? You got to win or else you're looking for a new job. So, you know, he offered me some great advice early on and I thought a lot about it. And for me at the time when I was becoming a coach and honing my skills as a coach, for me, I was, I felt I was always an educator first. So the high school level for me, the impact I felt I could have on, on the high school young man, I, I just felt that's where God wanted me to be. Now that might change in the next five or 10 years. I don't know, but I, I've always felt that that was, it was where God wanted me to be. 
and it was the most impact I could have on a young man growing up, um, helping them both as, you know, building their character and, uh, you know, being the best student they can be, but also being the best basketball player and athlete they can be. Of course. And we've seen it firsthand over the years and every, like all the years that you've been coaching at Hendrickson since 2000. Um, and again, going back to like Stonehill after you graduated in 95, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you continued to play overseas in Ireland, right? Yes. I went overseas. I went to Ireland and played uh, for a season, yep. which was a great experience, a great experience. Loved it out there. Met many, many great people. And uh, then I came back and I started teaching. I thought I was going to go back and play the next season. And then in the, in the last days, as I was getting ready to uh, book my plane ticket to go back, things uh, kind of fell through, um, which, uh, which I was okay with. Um, you know, I had, it was a great opportunity to, to continue to play and, and get paid to play and see the world. And I, I really enjoyed it, but when it was over, I was ready. And then that's when I really started to, to get into coaching and really get serious into that aspect. Yeah. So, um, when it, like you, we just said, when did you start to realize like, uh, like towards the end after that year, um, that one coaching was going to be your next passion and two, where to even like start with it? Uh, you know, I mean, we again, you came back to your home grounds at Hendrick but did you know where, uh, it was going to take you in the end? Um, no, I didn't. I mean, I, I knew that I loved the game of basketball. I loved working with young people. That's always been a passion of mine. I always loved mentoring young people to help them become the best that they can be. And then I loved my alma mater at Bishop Henrik. And so, um, when I came back from playing in Europe, I had a chance to get back on the Henrik and coaching staff under a legendary coach. I was telling you earlier, Steve Cesaretti, who um, was my mentor and my high school coach. So he brought me back to coach with him. And I found, I found that I really enjoyed it and I was pretty good at it. And then he, he retired and the, the job kind of fell in my lap actually. It's pretty interesting. Um, I was I was 26 years old, I think, 26, yeah, 25 or 26, and basically the team landed in my lap. Uh, I wasn't quite sure I was ready for it because I was 25, 26, about ready to get married. I had just gotten engaged. I was ready to get married, start a family. And I really didn't know if I wanted to do it just because I was starting a new stage in my life. But um, I felt at the time I wanted to give it a try and I wanted to give it my best. That's the one thing, like if I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna give it my best and, um, and I'm not gonna have any regrets. That's how I do things and just about everything I do in my life. So, um, so what happened is I, I take over the basketball program in the year 2000. So it was 2000. So coming up on 23 years um, this coming fall. And the crazy thing was we lost, I think, our first three or four games. Each game by, I think it was two points or less, Cam. Wow. And I'm saying to myself, what am I getting into? <laughs> what am I getting into? Is this what I really want? I mean, this, this is pretty tough. This is hard. Um, you know, and then, and then what happened was I kind of settled in. I took what I learned from the many mentors I've had over my life. And that first season, we... Um, we had some good players on that team. It just took some time for us to come together. And I remember it vividly. I remember um, we finished the season, I think 15 and 10, something like that. We won after losing our first four games. I think we rattled off something like 10 games in a row where we won. And then we went on a, a run in the playoffs, which was remarkable. 
and we made it all the way to the state championship game. And we faced who was the best team at the time. It was St. Rayfield Academy coached by Tom Sorrentine, who was a great legendary coach in Rhode Island. And we, we lost to St. Ray's in the finals at the Dunkin' Donuts Center. And they beat us up pretty good. So my introduction to head coaching was uh, a few haymakers to the chin early on and then a tough loss at the end. But I think what I learned there is that I could do it and I could be successful doing it and I could teach young men how to be their best. And so from that point, um, the next couple of years, we had some lean years. We had some difficult years. Um, again, I was questioning, I think coaches do that, especially early on in their careers. I was questioning, do I really want to do this? Can I do it? We had a couple of lean years. I'm talking like 500. And then one year, I think we were like 10 and 15. Um, but in the meanwhile, a couple of players had, uh, decided to come to Bishop Hendrickson, and, um, they took a chance on a young coach. One of those players was Jimmy Barron. Jimmy Barron, who became a great player at the University of Rhode Island and enjoyed a more decades worth career playing professionally in Europe. So he came in, he transferred when his father took the job at URI. Um, his father was looking at schools in the area and came and visited. And they decided to make uh, Hendrick and uh, Jimmy's high school when he, when they moved to Rhode Island. So Jimmy came to us as a sophomore and he reminded me a lot of myself growing up. He was a gym rat. I mean, that kid, uh, you know, he just would not leave the gym. I mean, we're talking thousands of shots a day. He was in there. And so he, he, he comes and becomes a tremendous player, tremendous high school player, tremendous leader. And then Joey Missoula, shows up he becomes a freshman and then guys like Don, uh, dj kachiri dave wilson brandon galliard david ruffle so now we start getting some serious student athletes and basketball players that want to come to hendrickson um and so it was in my fourth year cam in my fourth year we broke a seven year drought and we won our first of seven state titles in a row. That was in 2004. And, um, and then I started to kind of figure out what worked and what didn't work and how to coach and what drills to eliminate, what drills to add. I owe a lot of that to, to really, um, um, building my own coaching repertoire by getting out to coaching clinics and kind of refining my craft and learning. And um, I had a coach on my staff. He was a young guy. You probably will know him too. He may have even been on your show before, but I hired a young coach at the time. He had just graduated from Syracuse and did a year of, of, a grad assistant coaching at South Florida. And I hired Rob McClanahan. Yep. Mm -hmm. So Rob McClanahan, as you know, is uh, one of the top trainers in the world has multiple NBA all-stars on his clientele of guys that he trains on a regular basis. And so him, so Hendrickson was one of his first places refining his coaching and his training technique. And so he would work with some of our guys, Jimmy and Joey and, uh, and the whole crew of guys that come in, he'd get up, he'd, he'd work them out in the mornings before school. Then we'd practice. And so you, you started to see like the culture of our program really start to develop. And, um, and then, and then we just had some wonderful young men and families come through our program. And, and there was a time where, yeah, we won seven, state titles tied the state record of winning seven straight state titles from 2004 to 2010 and i've had so many so many good players good people 
and even players, my, like some of my student athletes. And one thing that I really pride myself on is, yeah, I mean, anybody, anybody can coach, you know, the great player, right? But I think what, what great coaches can do is they can make the average players outstanding and get everybody to buy into the system and the culture so that everybody is working towards one goal. And I feel that that's, that's one of the things that, that we do very well that I learned at a very early stage in my coaching career that I think has carried on uh, over the, the multiple decades now. I can't believe I'm saying decades. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I was, I was grateful enough to have a coach just like you and uh, Dan Missoula, you know, obviously you, everybody's known him around the state of Rhode Island. One of um, my favorites. Right. He's, she shaped me into like the person I am. And um, I tell Justin and Joey all the time, I've talked to Joey before and I actually just talked to Justin last night again. I've had him on twice. Um, you know, if, if it wasn't for him, I don't know where I would be, you know, without him because you know, a little bit about me, I'm right now I'm going to be going to my junior year at the university of Rhode Island. Um, I'm a student broadcaster. I'm a writer. Um, and I started this podcast my freshman year at Rick when COVID happened. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, everything was online. There was no games going on at Rick. I didn't get to have the full experience of becoming a broadcaster. So I started the podcast, you know, I, uh, I made connections and, you know, a year goes by. And then my first internship just ended at uh, 98, five, the sports hub and Beautiful. just more connections have been coming in and coming in. And like, they see the podcast and, you know, usually when, you know, young interns come in, they goof on what, what you know, what they have going on, but they were like, it's, it's greatly ran. And, and that means a lot to me. And, and again, it stems all from uh, coach Dan and what he taught me just as a player, not even just as a person outside of the sport, but, and I'm sure you do the same thing and you instill that same mindset into your players and talking with Justin, a perfect uh, question to uh, segue off what we were talking with um, is keeping each year fresh. Um, he said, uh, I should ask you, um, you know, year in year out, how do you keep the, you know, the game plan and uh, how does it uh, change from year in and year out? How do you keep it fresh and how do you just keep instilling into these players what, uh, what you do each year? That's a great question, Cam. So I think there's a lot that goes into it, right? So when you're building a team and you're building a program and you're building a culture, you want a culture that lasts long, right? You want your culture to last decades, if not more, right? But the boys that you have in front of you or the girls, you know, depending on, you know, what level you're coaching and who you're coaching, they change every year. And so even though you might have, so like my team this year, I have nine guys returning from my team from last year. But I look at it as, although I have this culture, right? We want to build this culture over a long period. We're starting brand new every year because between the time I have them in March and then the time I see them in December, a lot goes on in their lives, right? And so you, you, you have to keep those relationships strong. I, that's what I feel is probably the most important, right? It's, it's the relationships. So you have to keep those relationships over that time and then understand when you get them back, in the uh, in the winter time, right? You have already established those relationships, and now you just have to bring that particular group together and get them on the same page. So we do a lot of stuff like in the off season. So we'll train our guys in the off season, and in the summertime, we're playing in summer leagues where uh, you know we're training them in the gym. And yes, I'm doing that to improve their skills, but really we're doing that to build culture it's to get them to appreciate and love one another so going back to what you know what justin had mentioned to me uh coaching is really it's about love for one another all right and so when you get your team to understand that we're in it for one another and that when the person next to me succeeds i succeed beautiful things happen. Okay. And, you know, I, I think about my season this past year, uh, our team season, we, we went into the state playoffs, not being the top seed. We had a good team. Okay. We had a good team. We competed at a very high level, but if you were looking at talent wise, 
I think everybody in the state would say this was the year Hendrickson was going to go down, right? But because of the culture and the love that our guys had for one another going into the state tournament, which takes time to build, right? That takes time to build. They weren't going to let each other down. They weren't going to let each other down. So now, you know, we win a buzzer beater against LaSalle, which they were a great team, a great team. And I feel that that shot went down because my team loved one another. Then we get into the state final game against Classical, who had a monster team. We get down 18 to 2 to start the game. I think everybody in the gym probably wanted to hit the exits thinking we were done, right? I call a timeout and I, I say nothing about X's and O's. I talk about the love they need to have for one another in that moment if we are going to make a run at it. And so, you know, I, I feel that that's a, a huge part of our culture is, is our guys have a, a deep love and respect for one another. And listen, every, like I said, every team is different, right? But my teams that get the ultimate prize at the end of the season, you know, that win their last game of the season, they have a tremendous love for one another. And so as a coach, I have to be able to, and my coaching staff, we have to be able to adapt to that over the course of every single season and even throughout the season. So for my team this year, Cam, I, I brought out, and listen, I have a lot of lessons that I've learned over the years, a lot of things off the court that I do with our teams. I think for this year, I brought out everything in my repertoire, in my Rolodex uh, to help our team reach their potential. So that's, that's what building a team is like. You have to find what does the team need at any given time. And you as a coach have to be willing to adapt, get out of your own comfort zone, find out what those areas are you need to improve on and find creative ways to get it to stick into your players' heads. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, of, of course. I mean, very well said. I mean, I don't know if anyone could say it any better. I mean, um, just hearing from a lot of different coaches and um, I've actually, this is the, you're the first high school coach I've actually talked to. And um, you know, you have like the same mindset as all these different coaches. And it's like, I wish sometimes that I could still be a player and at the college level and, and learn more and more from uh, coaches like you and the ones that I've talked to. Um, but along those lines, um, like you've mentioned all the memorable moments, all the memorable players that you've been able to coach, um, you know, players like, like Justin told me, like Ricky Lito, you were able to coach his brother, Joey, mm -hmm. Uh, a player like Justin's players of that caliber that are just great um, on and off the floor, um, you know, to wrap everything up, just elaborate on what it's been like to have um, the opportunity to coach players like them. So I have coached over my 20 plus years coaching. I've coached thousands and thousands of young people, whether that's through camps, whether that's through, you know, my high school program, I've coached so many young people. And for me, it is truly, it is the greatest honor and the greatest blessing for me to be able to work with young people and help them become the best that they can be and they want to be. And do it by teaching them the importance of character, respect, and love for one another. Because those are the keys to success, no matter what you choose to do in life, far beyond basketball in the basketball court so I have always taken that that job seriously right if a parent is going to entrust their child with me and their staff and my staff they're going to get my very best and my coach's very best and I treat that as a tremendous blessing because that's what it is and I think about you know going back to the beginning of of the show here you know, that's what my father taught me. That's what my mentors as coaches have taught me, right? Yeah, it's great to be good at a sport, but it's more important to be a great human being and do things the right way. 
Do things with discipline, with respect. Do things as a great teammate, all right? Be a great teammate. Cam, I'll, I, I, I spend time in the classroom with my players talking to them about what it means to be a team, what effort means, what it means to be a good teammate, right? So we, we actually do like classroom lessons on these things. We do classroom lessons on mental toughness and focus. This past season, I brought in, um, uh, I brought in a school social worker to talk to my team about what it means to be, to, to be able to hold your focus and hold your attention. And, um, you know, all of those things that, you know, anybody can teach somebody how to dribble a basketball, right? But not anybody can teach somebody how to come together as one to accomplish a great goal. I've brought in yoga instructors over the years. I've brought it this past year. I brought in a military um, veteran who talked about his time in Iraq and what it what it meant to be a part of a team in Iraq and Afghanistan, right? And you know these are the life lessons that I take so seriously when I'm dealing with my with my young men here at Bishop Hendrickson. And I I hope you know I I think Justin probably mentioned some of these things. Um, yeah, for sure. And, uh, and if you talk to Joey and Jimmy and all the guys I've had over the years, they would tell you the same thing. I mean, it's a brotherhood. And um, when you have that, that brotherhood and that togetherness, so many great things can, uh, can happen. I, yeah. I tell my guys at the end of every, at the last game of every season, my favorite quote to use is, with great love, great things happen. With great love, great things happen. And so our guys really, uh, I think they really appreciate that and they really take it to heart. And um, I'm, I'm proud of every one of our guys that have come through this program. Yeah, couldn't have said it better. I mean, coaches, again, Coach Dan instilled that family um, mindset into all of us. And I've, I've been friends with those guys that I've known since middle school, just from him to this day. You know what I mean? They're just my true friends, just from, on the court interactions and, and instilling and keeping that family uh, mentality uh, together. So, I mean, that kind of wraps up everything that we were talking about today, coach. I mean, I, I appreciate the time just taking to sit down with me. I know uh, you're a very, very, very busy guy. Um, I just wanted to end off on uh, what'd you think of camps corner? I want to know, you know a little feedback. Uh, I love it. I think you're going to be very successful. <laughs> I appreciate I it. I think, um, you know, just from, from listening to you, you, you have great listening skills, great communication skills and great initiative. Sometimes when you want to, you know, do something in life, you have to have that initiative to get it going. And I love how you said, you know, during COVID when everybody was sitting around in their, in their houses doing nothing, you took the initiative to get this going, which is, which is huge. And, and let me tell you, that is a skill that you're going to need for the rest of your life, right? When you want something, you got to be willing to do what it takes to get it started. You have to have that initiative and that internal motivation and determination because that you can't measure that, but it is like one of the most important keys to success. All right. That in resilience, always remember that, but I wish you the very best cam. It's a great pleasure and honor for me to, to be on your show. And if there's anything I can do to help you in the future, count me in. I appreciate it, Coach. Thank you very much. I'll definitely be in touch, and uh, I'll try to come out to uh, a few Hendrickson games this year. I mean, I'll be down at URI, but I definitely want to come out and support the guys for sure. If you ever want to come to any of our games, any of our, just shoot me a text, give me a call, and uh, we'll get your front row seats. Most definitely, man. It was a pleasure talking to you, and we'll talk soon. Thanks, Cam. Take care. You too.